everyone, Yensid Organist here, and welcome to episode 50 of Orglecraft, the finale to season one and the major world tour. I'm so excited to get this episode going. Hope you guys are having a great day today. So, in the last episode, we dotted some builds around the world. Before that, we have been working to get the base finished, and we are pretty much there if you don't walk through this doorway. <laughs> um, yeah, so over the last few days, I've been kind of wandering around the world and just looking at everything and trying to figure out everything that needs to get finished, including this hole in the roof up here. Um... Yeah, and so I have been I have been working very hard to get things done. We gotta get this finished. We gotta get the exit to our base finished. So I got a lot of work to do before we can get this tour. Um, so I'm gonna get that done, and then we are going to proceed right on to the tour. So I will see you in a little bit. So we're not gonna talk about how long it took me to get to this point. Let's just say it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to, and you might notice something new behind me. There has been a lot of landscaping work done around the base here, and a lot of work getting it finished up inside, but everything is finally ready to go. I am happy with where everything is. We will take a closer look at all of this in a little bit, because we are going to be heading back to where all of this started in this world. Not exactly with the um, monorail here, um, but I figured this is the best way to see it. I built this um, fairly early on in the season um, after we uh, after we got the base started because I, I, I always loved the monorail at Walt Disney World. And I thought it would be a, a neat way to to be able to travel around our world. And so we built this we built this system that, um, takes us to all of the, the major points in the world right now. And in our last episode, we actually went around and added some interest to it, because unfortunately, up until last episode, we really didn't have anything along the monorail line except at the various stations that we have. And so, coming into view right now is one of the things that we did, one of the newest additions to this world, and this was a custom biome that I came up with using um, it, it, the traditional um, birch trees, but stripping the logs so that there's a little bit of a different texture. Um, and then adding some flowers as well to kind of create a custom biome that we can enjoy as we go past. Coming up on the desert, we have a couple of pyramids. Just adding a little bit of life to this area. And I, I think a future project may include a, a third, even larger pyramid um, tucked somewhere behind those two. And of course, there's, there's a lot of space along this monorail line that still can be developed. And so there's lots of, lots of fun things that we can do in the future. Coming into view is our village. This is where this whole series began with taking a, a, um, a, a pre-generated Minecraft village and really turning it into something special. Up here on the right is our village breeder. We did this very early on, I think in maybe episode 11 or 12, um, because uh, there was a major update to villagers and villager trading in the in the game. Uh, we, we have some sentinels here as we come over the wall and into the village. Um, but villager trading became very important to success and survival um, in Minecraft. And so we needed to be able to generate lots of villagers. And so that's where the villager breeder came from. So here we are in the village. Coming past our tree farm right now, we have every tree that is available up until the Nether update. Now, the Nether update has already come out, but um, we're not upgrading for this episode because I wanted to be able to uh, make use of the replay mod and also to be able to... Um, 
to to explore the nether together um, as we go forward. So this is our village. This is the house that we built in episode one after we kind of explored the world a little bit, got our, got our bearings, got some basic materials. But this is the little house. This is where everything started. And yeah, we still have we still have some of our original resources in here and just some things that we need for the village. Our bed is still here. Some of our animals are still here. Um, and as I say, as the sun sets, we should sleep, but we actually don't need to because everything is lit up here. So let's take a little bit of a tour and I'll tell you what, one of the things that we need to do is we need to finish off this project board. Um, this was something that we did early on to keep track of all the various things we wanted to do in this world. And I'm just going to move that out of there and we'll take that with us because that way we can keep the symmetry here. But yeah, so essentially we came through, we tore down all of the houses that were in here and and rebuilt them with some different materials brought a lot more life to them I was I was going through and adding some life and doing all the lighting I came across this little thing this is this is what lighting used to be in Minecraft villagers a block of wool on top of some fence posts with some torches and I decided to leave this as an homage to what villages used to be this was actually before this village came before the um the, the village and pillage update. So um, I, I decided to keep that. Here we have some townhouses that we built for our villagers. Our little nano crop farm is in there. Up here we have we have one of my favorite features in this village. We have this little um, cave, tunnel, whatever you want to call it, that leads down to some of the um, farms that we have in here. And I really like this. This 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 little bit of farmland was actually here um, naturally um, in when the world generated, and we we ended up building building around it and creating a nice access point to it for our villagers who are not doing the best job tending the crops here, but that's all right. We'll, we'll leave them to it. Coming up here, we can see some more crop farmland that we have. There's a number of uh, these little crop farms sprinkled throughout the village and that we've <laughs> cleaned up and improved and added some special lighting. We've got another little passage through a cave up here. Up on top of the village we have we have more farmland here and down there. This was this was an original library in this village that we kind of reworked the interior. Um, and we w w once upon a time we had a bunch of all of the villager workstations. Great, now I'm going to have to fix that. This is what I get for trying to do a cinematic thing. Uh, anyway, I'll fix that later. This was the original tower from the village that we completely replaced the cobblestone with stone bricks and some variations on it. And this was our original storage. We have a couple of levels down here where we've got materials. Um, most of it has been cleaned out. There are some things here and there. Um, that are left over that didn't make the transfer over to the base. Um, but yeah, this was this was our first storage area. And if we actually go up here, there's a little bit of a lookout on the top, and we can look out over all of the village. And I don't remember how many houses were here originally, but we went and we've added some of our own as we've gone along. This little blacksmith's shop over here um, was an original part of the village that we cleaned up a little bit. And then there was another library as well. This used to be the well, which we turned into a natural little spring that leads down to a couple of pools and a river that flows out to the lake. This was our original smelter which I think still has some fuel in it. I don't think there's any resources left in here, though. 
This was our first enchanting setup. This is where we had our first mending villager, and I think we still have some stuff in here. Not much left over. Um, but after after setting up our villager trading hall in the base, I came over here and converted this back to normal. This used to be an iron door that no one could get out of. <laughs> but we decided I decided that I decided that they could roam free now, so we converted that. Over here is one of the more recent additions to the village. Uh, I wanted to add a few more houses and things, and so we came over here, and these villagers apparently are baffled by the double door, because they keep getting stuck here, and I don't know why. But, oh well. We will leave them to it. Hopefully they can find a place to rest for the night. Traveling up this hill, we have a couple more houses that was made in the most recent... Um, a uh, little, little bit of work that we did here. And I've gone through and um, added some bone meal, some grass, some flowers to all of the land here. Just to, just to give it a little bit more life. Make it a little bit more interesting. Over here we have our first zero tick farm. This is, this is something that is about to be retired. Um, but it's this um, farm that uses pistons to make crops such as sugarcane and bamboo grow very, very rapidly. And we have a decent store of a number of those materials over here. But these, these farms have broken in the 116 update. So this is just going to stand here as a testament to what used to be in Minecraft. Over here we have a little um, barn stable area that we created very early on. We have some, not, not all of our original animals, but we've got some cows, donkeys, horses. We've got a mule here that we bred um, on one of our live streams. Coming up the hill here, we have our automated pumpkin, melon, and sugarcane farm. They all take place down below here. You can actually see a little bit of the sugarcane farm and hear it working. Um, and then all of our resources come up here. Again, I said we have our tree farm over here. It has all of our overworld trees. Um, I don't. I don't think I'm going to be expanding it to include the the new nether trees, um, but we will. We'll we'll come up with something to be able to do that. One of the newest features to this village is this little tunnel. This did not used to be here. Um, but a while back, I actually created a house in this world with my daughter, and we, we picked this area back here to build in. But as I was trying to work paths all through the village, I discovered that there really was no good way to get here, and so we built this little tunnel coming through underneath the tree farm to, uh, to give us, um, an access to it. Now... If you remember some of the older episodes, there used to be a nether portal in here, and I was having problems with villagers wandering into the nether. So, I decided to do something about that. And up here, we have tucked away a little hidden entrance to our nether portal that we can close up and we can prevent the villagers from going through. So, that's about it for the village. So let's pop into the nether and see some of the other things that we have done in this world. So there was an update that allowed us to create um, portals on top of, on the roof of the nether, and so we moved, moved all of our portals up here for ease and safety of travel. And it makes it a lot easier to, to get around the world. Right now we are headed over to, I think, what is probably the first major farm that we did in this world, and that is the Guardian Farm. So after taking down um, an underwater temple, we converted it to a Guardian Farm. And I actually have the portal set to come out in the storage area now. This place probably still needs a little bit of design work, and there's no good way to get out of it. You don't really need to get out of it, um, but we will go up here. As the sun rises, you can see this is the Guardian Farm that we built 
Um, I'm trying to remember how far into the season. I know I built it. I, I know I built it over Christmas break because um, it was a project that required quite a lot of work. But um, haven't haven't used the resources from it a ton, other than it's been uh, my sole source of food in this world. But with some of the plans that I have coming up for Season 2, we will definitely be making use of all the Prismarine supplies that we have been getting in here. Heading back through the Nether, we're going to take a quick spin past our hub. And I've gone through and carpeted all of the major areas um, in this world that we can travel to, if I can land on here. The lime green carpet leads us to the end portal. The green carpet leads us to the jungle. Gray leads us to a gravel mountain. Red leads us to actual access to the nether. Yellow leads us to the desert, which we will be seeing a little bit later. Purple to a mushroom island. Brown to a taiga. Black out here actually leads us to um, a number of farms that we have, and our Mesa, or I guess Badlands, as they're now known as, are out there. But this is our squid farm. This is one that we designed not too long ago, but I was definitely in need of ink for a number of different things, and so we created the squid farm here. Clearly I was last here at night. And then we found a couple of mini flower forests over here, and so we used that to create a... Yeah. We used that to create a flower farm, and a number of flower farms that are semi-automatic down here. So here we are able to grow almost all of the flowers that you can um, create in Minecraft. And they're grown and broken. And then we are able to um, flush them all out and have them transfer into storage areas. We have a two tall flower farm and about the only thing that we can't get out of here are the blue orchids. And that is something that is still on my list of things that needs to get done in this world is I need to build another one of these flower farms over in a swamp so that we can get those blue orchids. making a quick trip here to our beacon mine. We're actually, this is our entrance to the, the lower portion of the nether, and there's a couple of major farms in here that have been absolutely essential to this world, and that is our ghast farm and our wither skeleton farm. So in this fortress, we discovered a double blaze spawner, and because I really had a great need for end rods, and they take forever to find in the end, we set this up so that we would be able to craft those much easier, and we are able to get a ton of blaze rods very quickly from this farm. And in this fortress, we have our wither skeleton farm that I have been working to spawn proof all of the area around here to make it more efficient and I still have a long way to go but we get decent rates and I think I've been able to acquire around eight beacons um, from all of the mobs here and as you can see lots of <laughs> lot, lots of good stuff coming in here let's see if maybe we can get a few wither skeleton skulls while we're at it while we're here might as well Oh well, doesn't look like we got a skull from it this time. Oh well. But this has been a very useful farm. This was the this is the last major farm that we built and 
hopefully the last major farm that we will need. I'm sure there will be things we'll want in the future as the game gets updated. But this, this was quite the milestone to be able to finish this project. So with that done, let's head back to the village and we will continue our monorail tour. I thought we'd take a little bit of an aerial tour of the village to round out this portion of the tour. But I, I really have enjoyed this project and coming back to it time and time and again, just being able to add little details here and there. We added these boats, we completely terraformed the little bayous in here, and it's just it's just a quaint little village, and I'm, I'm really happy with how things have turned out. So the sun is setting, and while our monorail track is illuminated, I think we'll go ahead and sleep in our old house one more time for old time's sake. So we bid the village a fond farewell for now. We may come back in the future, but with the work that I have done as far as lighting and um, detailing, I, I feel like we can, we can firmly put that project to rest, but we will, definitely, we, will, we will definitely always enjoy it and come back to it from time to time. So coming up here on the left is another recent addition in the last episode to our monorail line. And this is the first house that I ever built in the Java edition of Minecraft. And I thought it would be kind of fun to recreate it here. And so there it is. And it's not finished. It has no interior. But that's again something we can come back to later. This is another one of those original Minecraft villages, and you can see another one out there in the distance. This is where many of our first villagers came from as we were getting started in this world. Straight ahead is the creeper farm. This is the source of all our gunpowder. It also doubles as a spider farm, so we're able to get string from there. And it has served me very well. I have not AFK'd at this farm in months, and yet we're still going strong with gunpowder for rockets, and I fly around quite a lot. Next, of course, we have the massive iron farm, which I have AFK'd at once. And still have plenty of iron, as you can see. We have used it a lot in all of the various different projects. Um, and as I said, I haven't had to AFK here since, but these are all of our villagers. There's our little Tuscan Raider up here just waiting to be put back into service. This is the little bunker that we created as a little bit of a safe house when we were working on all of this and this is this is my this is my um little opulent indulgence in this world so we have sea lanterns which have our custom texture up there and we have iron blocks which used to be a very very scarce commodity in this world and with building the iron farm and building the guardian farm, we were able to use these resources much more abundantly. And so I built what was at the time would have been considered a very, very expensive little bunker here. But now, um, you know, is just a, a little safe space if I ever come back here to AFK. So, now entering the last leg of the journey through our Minecraft world. We have a little bit of a wheat farm over here that we worked on in the last episode. Something that is showing is something that was built once upon a time and then has been abandoned and has been somewhat reclaimed by all of the elements. When I was trying to figure out the layout for the monorail, 
I was contemplating a few different options as to where it would go, whether it would be something that would be utilitarian and just take us to all of the important things, or if it would take more of a scenic route and and show off some of the more interesting features of this world. One of the things that we found in the very first episode was this fractured savanna biome. And um, I'm seeing now as I'm going past, still have some of the original poles that were marking out um, the approximate path of the monorail. But I thought this was such a cool biome, and it's something that I definitely want to come back to in the future. As you can see, we built a little house up there. Um... And I want to I want to populate this whole biome with houses like that that are built way up on the cliffs, um, you know, as a as a, as a kind of a uh, yeah we seem to be stuck as a as a little village, um, you know, built in this very remote and treacherous landscape. But I think it would be really really cool to come up with. So here we pass yet another of those original Minecraft villages with, I believe, just one villager left. You can see some of those old um, <coughs> torches out there. And we have that villager who is left wandering on top of that house. And here we are back at our base. And as you can see, I've added a number of planters to this to bring some more life, to bring some color to the area, and just to add a lot more interest to this place. And I really like these palm trees, although I have to admit, if I ever have to build one of these palm trees again, it will be too soon. But here we are, back at the base, and this is the center point, really, of our world. This is where all of our resources are, many of our farms are. Inspired by Spaceship Earth at Epcot, and taking a lot of the interior takes a lot of its inspiration from the current iteration of the ride. Before we go there, though, we have a couple of little farms in here. We have a honey farm that we recently created, and... We will have, when I get enough bees, a, um, a honeycomb farm over here as well. But that is something that we are still in the process of. But we have gotten quite a lot of honey from this farm. Don't have any use for it yet, but if we ever need it in the future, it will be there. One of the first things that we built that was actually functional in this area was the automatic sheep farm. And I've done a little bit of cleaning up in the meantime here, so this room looks a little bit nicer. But we have all of the colors of wool, all 16 colors here. And I actually recently had to empty all the chests out because they were full to overflowing. But set up a little bit of a... Um, an area to work here, so we've got a loom, we've got a, a crafting bench here, we've got some dyes, we've got stuff to make banners, and then we have shulker boxes to transfer things, and just had a little bit of fun making some flags to kind of decorate this place. But now it's time for the tour of the base. This is what we have been working on for a long, long time. I think this goes all the way back to maybe episode 16 or 17. And it has been quite the process to get this base finished, and I'm so excited to finally be done with it and to finally be able to share everything that is on the inside. Before we go in, I want to make sure that you are able to, to, to fully enjoy this experience. As I said, this, this base is based off the current iteration of Spaceship Earth, and I'm going to have a little bit of fun with the tour of the base. If you're familiar with the ride, you know that there are a number of different scenes that go through the history of the Earth, and 
as I said, the um, all of the different aspects, areas of our base are, are based on that ride. If you're not familiar with it, um, or even if it's been a while since you've been to Epcot, I really would suggest that you go and watch a ride through of of the current version of Spaceship Earth, and I'm going to put a link to it on screen right now, if I can, otherwise it is down in the description. But you should definitely go watch through that and just kind of re-familiarize yourself with the ride and the script, because I'm going to be using that as a template to go through our base. So I will give you a minute to go do that, and then I will see you as we head inside. Like a grand and miraculous spaceship, our Minecraft world has sailed through the universe of time, and for a brief moment we have been among its passengers. But where are we going, and what kind of future will we discover there? The answers lie in our past 50 episodes. Since our first episode on April 1st, 2019, we've been inventing this world one step at a time. So let's travel back in time together. I'll show you how we created the world we know today, and then we'll get to create the world of tomorrow. Here is where our story begins. We are alone, struggling to survive, until we learn to consolidate the resources we've collected. Now we can build with confidence, knowing we have the materials we need to be successful. Now let's move ahead to ancient Egypt, because something is about to happen here that will change the future forever. To survive and thrive in this world, we need renewable resources, including fuel like bamboo and sugarcane, which gives us paper. With these materials firmly in hand, we are able to bring about the dawn of a great Minecraft civilization. At this point, we have most of the things we need, but there is more to surviving in a Minecraft world than just gathering and storing resources. The Phoenicians lead us to a solution. As traders, they create simple food farms that prepare us for the future of interacting with Minecraft villagers. Remember how easy it was to trade? Thank the Phoenicians. The ancient Greeks were great inventors of the future. They developed an intriguing new subject called alchemy. Alchemy allows us to brew potions, which gives us special abilities, making our life in this world much safer. But then we hit a roadblock. To create some materials, we need to smelt others. With the fall of the Roman Empire, the great library of Alexandria is burned. But it is here among these smoldering ruins that we find our super smelter, which allows us to quickly convert resources to new forms. In the meantime, here in Europe, villagers toil endlessly recording and enchanting books. These books make it easier to create powerful tools to lead us into the future, and the result is an incredible explosion of innovation that we call the Renaissance. Books, it seems, were just the beginning. Now villager trading technology races headlong into the future, and soon we are able to get tools, weapons, armor, and resources like stone and wood faster than ever before. By now, we have almost everything we need to create the future of our Minecraft world, but there are a few more things we need. Concrete has to be converted from powder, and snow needs to be farmed in large quantities. Now we see even more potential. With everything we have so far, all we need now is a place to rest and return to in the event of a disaster. The solution comes in, of all places, a garage in California. Here we find our bed, and a special machine to quickly re-equip ourselves in the event of a Minecraft death. And once again we stand on the brink of a new renaissance. After 50 episodes of Orgelcraft, here we are, a growing Minecraft world poised to shape the future of this our spaceship Earth.
For the first time in the history of this series, we have all we need to shape the world we want to live in. The choices we have made for the past 50 episodes have been inventing the future one video at a time. And now, it is time to start something new. This episode marks the end of Season 1, but we are only getting started. Season 2 will be much more focused on building, and I'm excited to share my plans with you soon. So here's to the next 50 episodes of Orgelcraft. While no one knows for sure what we'll see or do, I do know it will be quite an adventure. An adventure that we'll take and make together. See you in the future. So there we go, our tour of our Spaceship Earth Orgelcraft base. And of course, here is the ending room of this. We have a little bit of a trophy room here. We have some um, we have some mementos from our world, some achievements that we have accomplished. Um, and, and, and there's room to grow this as, as we accomplish more in the world. Here we've got our little chorus fruit and flower farm. And then our little door that takes us right back outside. So that is going to do it for episode 50. And I don't know what to say. <laughs> it has been quite a journey over the last year and a few months in building all of this up. And it's been so much fun and it's been something I never thought was going to happen when I created that first episode all those long months ago. But here we are, 50 episodes in. We have an amazing base that I'm so happy with and a world that is just going to grow and grow in the future. And I want to thank you so much for watching these videos, for sharing them, um, and for coming along on this trip with me. I've, I've really enjoyed getting to share this creative process with you, and I hope that you will continue to enjoy things as we go forward into the future. So as I said, this is the end of season one, but not to worry, season two is going to be starting very, very soon. I've got a couple other things in the works for in between, and I've got some work that I need to do preparing for season two. I've been dropping some hints on live streams as to what the next season is going to be. And the last one that I came up with was the name of my sword. I'm not really big on naming the swords, but this is, this is the clue that I'm going to share with you. That is the name of the sword. It is related to what my plans are for Season 2. But I will say this, guys, I want a castle. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you have enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to subscribe and make sure you click that little notification bell so you can stay up to date on all my latest posts. Be sure to follow me on social media and hope that you will join us on Wednesday nights for our live streams. Thank you so much for watching. See you real soon.